uh, fintech maintain its lead in this quarter also and continues to be the uh, legacy sector for pe participation we saw a 2.5x jump in the deal volume in 2022 compared to 2020 uh, primary tactics for scaling a saas business and essential elements of a saas product Hi. Welcome to the June edition of Nascom Insights Tech Bites. My name is Achyuta Ghosh and for those of you who are not familiar, Tech Bites is a monthly digest from Nascom Insights that includes highlights from reports on the technology sector that were published by us in the previous month, engagement sessions that we held, as well as a concise summary of the data, trends and strategies that stood out during this period. By clicking the link provided in the description box below, you can access our previous TechBite reports for free. The intention is to offer you, the viewer, a sense of what is happening in India's rapidly evolving tech sector. But before we start, quick reminder: please like and subscribe to our channel to stay abreast of the latest in India's tech industry. The first section uh, that we want to cover here is what's really new in Nascom Insights in the last few weeks. Uh, we started this month with the release of the report called Tech Startups Quarterly Investment Fact Book, which is a Nascom One Lattice Quarterly Funding Update on investments in the tech startup sector. It covers funding details by volume, value, stage, and other metrics. This is a free report, and the download link is in the description box below. The second report we released. was in partnership with Ernst and Young this was the second edition of our annual M&A report titled a year of paradoxes M&A trends and outlook in the technology services sector the report analyzes deal activity in 2022 and provides valuable insights into buyer strategies key acquisition themes and public and private market valuation trends this is also a free report and the download link is in the description box below okay Now that we have summarized our key research last month, I will call upon uh, some of the analysts to come and share some more details on each of these reports. For the first report, Tech Startups Quarterly Investment Fact Book, I like to invite Ashish Gupta to share some key findings. Welcome Ashish. Thanks Ashish. First question Ashish, you know what were the key highlights uh, in the Indian tech startup funding ecosystem uh, in Q1 calendar year of 2023? Thanks Ashish. So last quarter was good if we talk from the funding perspective of the Indian tech startup ecosystem even though global funding continues to be tepid and was down by over 50% year on year uh, but Indian startup funding environment shows experience some green shorts and stands at US 3.1 billion dollar in this quarter which is 7% up from the previous quarter even a steady increase in the deal volume was observed and overall deal volume increased by 2.3% from the previous quarter Another key highlight of the last quarter was the growth in late stage funding. So over the past few year a few quarters we have seen that the late stage funding has been declining significantly and that has been a major cause of the overall drop in funding. So the return on invest uh, investors interest in the area is very positive news from the startup ecosystem perspective. The percentage share of the late stage funding increased from 17% to 28% in this quarter. and this percentage was 9% in the last to last quarter so that's why this increase was very much important and that's why <coughs> and confirms that investors are getting back into the action now if we talk about the next key highlight and talk about the vertical focus uh, fintech maintain its lead in this quarter also and continues to be the uh, legacy sector more than one third of the total uh, funding of the quarter went to fintech which is almost uh, <coughs> 1 billion dollar that is primarily driven by payments which accounted for 60% of the total funding again what stood out from the vertical perspective was the ret- return of retail tech what do you say because the funding for retail tech increased by over 60% from the previous quarter thanks again to the late stage funding that led to this growth where mature companies like lenscard phone pay and insurance deco uh, raised large large rounds now we have seen some kind of strategic shift that uh, uh, that confirmed that investors are back into the action and a lot of interest is there into the startup ecosystem is number one the resurgence in the b2c funding so the past quarters b2c funding was pretty down 
but in this quarter the share of b2c funding the total funding increased from 72% compared to 48% in the last quarter also the return of large ticket side deals is back so almost uh, if you talk about the 100 million dollar funding deals that accounted for 50% of the total deal value in this quarter and this percentage was 25% in the last quarter so again a very positive for the ecosystem also we have seen that <coughs> investors are shifting uh shifting from being vertically focused to being sub vertically focused and again to give the best example of that fintech uh we have seen that in this quarter payments accounted for more than 60% of the total funding and if you look at the previous quarter the lending and collection sub vertical received more than 50% of the total funding so a shift is happening and investors are again uh, backing that up Thanks, Ashish. So I think key takeaways for me for this part is definitely uh, that Indian startup funding in the Indian startup sector continues to grow, okay. even though globally it's still going down. Uh, rise in B two B funding, B two C funding is is coming in, and uh, the third trend is the large deals that is uh, definitely coming in. Uh, but do you really see any signals that really uh, advise caution uh, still in this sector? Definitely, Achuta. There are two which I particularly want to highlight. The most important thing is. Uh, the no no unicorn came up in this quarter and mm -hmm. this trend has been going on from the past past two quarter and that is a signal of caution for all of us but the only positive part is that it's a global phenomena and unicorn numbers are low across the world slow funding macroeconomic factor continues to affect all this but uh, with the return of late stage funding we expect uh, that this trend of uh, zero unicorn might improve in the coming quarter and since investors are coming back into the action we expect new unicorns in the coming quarters another point that needs some attention from all the stakeholders is that the drop in growth stage funding uh, even though early and late stage funding continues to increase from the past few quarters but the share of growth stage funding has dropped well below 50% and this was never happened in the previous quarter though it might be momentarily but it is important in the sense that potential unicorn usually falls uh into this growth stage funding bracket so if the growth stage funding goes down it can have the it can directly impact new unicorns that we are expecting in the new quarter so that's why these two factors are a caution in this sector thanks ashish for pointing it out uh, please be reminded viewers that this report is also completely free for download uh, the link is provided in the description box below for the third report this month uh, on m&a trends in the technology services sector we have prajwal uh, welcome to the show prajwal thanks achuta um to get started prajwal how is the deal activity in 2022 okay the mna deal activity sure so at the for 2022 we saw record deal volumes across industry segments but if we try to be spec specific i think it services and the er and d segment stood out uh, last year uh, you know the activity levels for them exceeded the previous 5 years levels uh, in terms of deal volume for the bpm segment uh, the bpm segment increased significantly in 2021 but you know uh, remained sort of stable for 2022 the deal volume overall deal volume for uh, for the overall activity saw 2x jump from 2020 levels but remains flattish from 2021 to 2022 uh, so for an analysis we have divided the deals into two private equity versus strategic deals uh, for pe participation we saw a 2.5x jump in the deal volume in 2022 compared to 2020 In terms of strategic deals, unique buys increased from 200 in 2020 to 350 in 2022. So, if we talk about the key drivers uh, for the acquisition and the deals, uh, we saw capability tuck-in that tops the list as acquirers are scouting for new age competencies to stay ahead in the industry disrupted by the rapid pace of innovation. The next in the list is scalability, where the highly fragmented IT MSP and the MSSP segment, which has close to 50,000 regional players in the US, is now consolidating. We saw P investors, you know, also playing a crucial role through platform-led roll-up acquisitions. Uh, if 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 we go down the list, I think we have a vertical expansion, geographic expansion, and then we have uh, delivery near shore are amongst the you know key drivers for the M&A in 2022. Thanks, Prajwal. I think uh, good to see that there's a lot of M&A activity that happened in 2022. Uh, what's the outlook looking like for M&As in 2023 in the technology sector? Okay. So, if we see uh, the slowdown in the deal activity that we could observe in the uh, quarter one of calendar year 2023, uh, there were close to 150 deals that were announced this quarter, compared to 270 plus in the same quarter last year. Uh, we also saw soft guidances by you know large IT players, 
Uh, so overall, we can say the deal activity is expected to drop from 2022 levels, but to remain buoyant uh, in 2023. Uh, in terms of the, the strategy, I think in, uh, in organic strategy is likely to remain a key lever for growth as service uh, providers across segments are expected to capture value from adjacencies. Uh, demand for digital uh, capabilities such as data analytics, automation, digital product engineering, digital CX, etc. will remain in high demand among large and mid-sized IT players, uh, engineering companies, BPM, BPOs, PE investors and agencies. Thanks Prajwal. I think this was very enlightening um, and uh, I think this will be a very uh, important sector to keep watching out for as companies continue to look at uh, sure. M&As to yeah. uh, enhance their capabilities. Uh, again, viewers, it's a free report. Uh, the download link is below. Thank you. Thanks. Next up, we have Naman who will provide a brief summary of some of our most recent thought leadership sessions and explains why you should be watching them. Hey Naman, welcome. Sure. Hey, thanks Ajita. So in May, we had uh, three Tech Talk sessions that and uh, th all of them were very interesting topics. Uh, the first session that we had in May was around the Indian SaaS and the title was Indian SaaS Transformative, Adaptive, Innovative and Future Focused. Uh, so in this session, our conversation revolved around the importance of exclusivity in SaaS, what makes SaaS a vital element for organizations uh, primary tactics for scaling a SaaS business and essential elements of a SaaS product. So in this conversation, we were joined by leaders from GS Lab, Devami Design Labs and Quixi. Our second tech talk for May, and this is an exciting one, Achita, uh, as you know, it's titled as Navigating Market Headwinds, a tech startup quarterly review Q4 CY 2022. Uh, the conversation revolved around the global funding trends and whether global reduction would have any effect on companies. Also, as you know that no startup conversation is complete unless the word unicorn is mentioned. Uh, so in this conversation, uh, we talked about the self-evaluation phase of startups and tried to understand if deep tech startups produced any new unicorns in this uh, year that we've mentioned. For this discussion, we were joined by two uh, industry leaders from datafoundry.ai and one Labs. Our third and final tech talk in May covered the m and trends and outlook in the technology services sector. The conversation outlined uh, the year so far in terms of the deal activities. The highlights of the session were m and themes in response to the current environment, uh, new areas of risk that are uh, that one should focus on uh, quantum of capital allocations to MNA key MNA priorities for BPM and CX uh, CX players top strategic drivers for MNA and IT service uh, approach to valuation and structures and most importantly uh, what should be the ideal exit strategy for anybody uh, for this discussion we were joined by leaders from EY India uh, Master Group Infosys Genpact and Warburg Pincus uh, India Private Limited. And moving on to the last section, which focuses on themes and trends that stood out this month in the tech industry, um, inviting Prajwal. Prajwal, uh, what were the key trends that you saw in the Indian tech sector this month? Thanks, Achuta. So uh, starting with IT services and BPM, we observed partnering for Gen AI as the key trend uh, this month. You know, Indian IT companies have begun collaborating with uh, cloud service providers to create their own uh, solution for generative AI basis the request that they are uh, uh, getting from their clients. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, the ERND segment where you know ERND digital delivery centers uh, are being opened by the, the Indian ERND companies to expand expand globally as well as in India. Uh, moving on in this segment, we have partnerships as another trend wherein ERND companies are collaborating with academias to jointly develop solutions for the mobility segments and also uh, you know including them in the business transformation across different different segments in the industry now coming to startups i think the key trend here was reverse flipping that continues uh, to be on the cards for many indian tech startups uh, now see uh, reverse flipping is a process that allows a company to move its domicile from a foreign jurisdiction to india and uh, i think we saw earlier phone pay moving its domicile a few months ago to to india and now we see razor pay you know showing similar interest in moving their uh, domicile back to india thanks prajwal um, and what were the key business partnerships that you saw and contracts that really stood out in may for the indian tech companies okay so uh, starting with partnerships achuta i think the key uh, uh, partnership we saw was wipro entering into a five year partnership with servicenow 
for process consulting, uh, configuration, implementation, and managed services. Uh, if you talk about the key industries that this partnership will be focusing on, that will be manufacturing, energy and utilities, financial services, and the healthcare sector. Uh, moving on, I think Tata Technologies also signed an MOU with IT Hyderabad. And this is to collaborate in the areas of SDVs, which is the Software Defined Vehicles and Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, ADAS, and help reduce technology incubation time and cost. Uh, for contracts, we saw Infosys and BP deepen their relationship to transform BP's digital uh, application landscape. Uh, we also saw, you know, SolarWinds partnering with Infosys to, uh, you know, sort of speed up the transition into the new SaaS model. Uh, now, Infosys in this transaction will give uh, SolarWinds access to the uh, suit of enterprise cloud solutions called Cobalt. And any acquisitions that you saw uh, this month, uh, Prajwal? Yeah, so talking about the key acquisitions, Achuta, I think uh, you know we, we saw uh, Bharat Pay acquiring majority stake in the Mumbai-based non-banking financial company uh, Trillion Loans to uh, boost their lending business. Uh, now this acquisition aims to bolster uh, Bharat Pay's presence in the segment and further propel their uh, journey towards growth and profitability. Thanks Prajwal. And with that, we have come to the end of this month's edition. Thank you all for watching this and I hope you found it informative. Visit the NASCOM community and NASCOM websites to download and read our reports. Keep coming back because we have a great lineup of reports uh, in this month in June. Do like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon on top so that you are notified as soon as new videos drop on the NASCOM Insights channel. Do reach out to us for any feedback and suggestions at research at nascom.in. And of course, we look forward to your comments down below. Thank you. Thank you.